when you've built up a personal brand and you've built up an audience that has trust in you and they see you as a voice of authority, then you have the audience that you can market your services to. Because a brand is like a song. You write a song and you need to sing it loudly for other people to hear it. You can share why, why you did and convince your audience to also have the same passion for that field. And maybe you could be the, a pioneer in, in that field. You could be the person that brought that topic into mainstream. Our ancestors lived in a world that was confined by the boundaries of geography. As early humans on this earth, we traveled on land by foot and moved very slowly. Then we invented the wheel. We were able to roam the land much more quickly, but still only confined to the land. Then we invented ships and we could travel the seas and reach other continents. We invented the airplane and then we could travel across continents in a matter of hours. The internet enabled us to communicate with people across the world in a matter of seconds. And with the invention of the internet came about new technologies that connected us even more, allowed us to broadcast ourselves into a large audience within a few seconds. And with the internet came things like social media, which allowed us to stay connected with our peers. At first, that's all it was, was a way to stay connected with our friends. And then it evolved into something new, the creator economy. And this world is continuing to change as a result of this creator economy. The creator economy has allowed people to film their skills, film themselves teaching, and pass on those skills, pass on ideas, philosophies, and share those with a large audience. It's transformed all kinds of fields from spirituality to business and information. And it's given us opportunities to learn from others that have created value with the skills that they've developed. You can now learn anything on platforms like YouTube where you can learn how to be a programmer, you can learn how to start a business or learn fitness. You can study history, you can study science. As a result of this creator economy, the current education system is becoming increasingly irrelevant. This creator economy has unleashed a tide of information that is being shared where if you've mastered a skill, no matter how you attain that skill, if you can teach it, convey the ideas to others in a simple way that makes it easy to understand to the masses, then that's all the credibility that you need in order to be someone of authority. One of the most evident transformations that has been brought by the creator economy is in education. You know, the traditional education system is very outdated with their obsolete curriculum and their ways of teaching and the expectations that they set on everyone for how they should learn and how they should study. The traditional education system is losing trust and people are turning to these creators to learn how to start a business, to learn a, a new skill, to learn finance, really any skill for personal or professional growth you can find through a creator. Because the traditional education system isn't giving students the education that employers need them to have. How do you start a business? You know, you're not going to learn that in school. If you did, then so many other people would know how to do it. How do you manage your own personal finances? That's something you also don't learn in school. But all over YouTube, you can find videos on how to manage your finances, how to uh, build a investment portfolio. You can listen to case studies of multiple entrepreneurs who dropped out of school and decided to start a business and have made it through grind. There's a tweet that I read that says, knowledge not found in schools is a source of money that is not found in employment. So in other words, in order for you to find ways to make money outside of a traditional job, then you need to look in avenues outside of school, outside of traditional academia. You know, I studied at MIT. I got my 
bachelor's degree in chemical engineering there. And I can tell you that for the last almost 10 years, I haven't used my degree. I learned how to build software by watching tutorials on YouTube and working on projects until I was comfortable working on my own projects. And then slowly I built my skills to the point where I started a software development agency and we built projects for big companies like Amazon and Red Bull TV. This breed of creators that is stepping in to fill the gaps not filled by traditional schooling are creating content that is adapting quickly because when you create a piece of education, you can view how it's performing. You can quickly see in real time the response of, of your audience and make changes to your content. Or other creators can also find that same content that is similar to what they wanna create and they can find ways to make it better. And in that way, we are continually improving what is being produced. I'm not saying that the traditional academic system isn't serving anyone. It does serve a lot of people. We still need people who can stay in academia and pursue fields like engineering and law and uh, medicine because these fields require some structure, they require several years of schooling and these are things that you can't really quickly learn on YouTube, not to the same level that traditional schooling offers. And there's also many personality types that still benefit greatly from the structure that is offered by academia. You know, not everyone can sit down to watch a series of YouTube videos to learn a new skill, they need more of a structure and that's why the curriculum in academia suits them so well. And if you resonate with the creator economy, it's likely that this traditional school system isn't serving you and maybe your personality type is more of an innovator, more of a visionary and rather than seeking the familiar, rather than going with the status quo and what's already a structure that's been existing for m many years. You look for new ways of doing things. You look for ways to improve what currently exists. And that's something that's innate in your personality type. Personality theories, there are many of them. The one I'm studying is able to recognize what your innate traits are based on your physical appearance, your physical features, and your body movement. And I'll share more of these ideas over time. But one thing that all personality type theories have in common is that they mention that there are certain personality types that are new into this world. They're very uncommon and they haven't existed for a long time. But as they become more abundant on this earth, then they bring change. They bring new qualities that weren't as abundant before. And so they're able to bring about change. At one point on this earth, Traits such as conscientiousness and seeking the familiar and seeking more structured way of living were traits that were not innate in people. You know, we were nomads. We were traveling the, the earth uh, looking for food and we didn't really have established settlements. And when these traits evolved into the human race, then we started establishing structures. It started settling in places permanently and finding ways to exist in, in tribes and in larger and larger communities. And it's these traits that brought about the creation of, of societies, um, establishing permanent settlements, finding um, new ways for agriculture and feeding large masses of people. And if people with these traits hadn't come into this earth, then we would have never evolved those structures and maybe we would continue to live as nomads. So in the same way, there will be people who prefer old ways of thinking, they prefer the status quo, they like the familiar, they like the current structure and they don't want to make changes. But it's time for a new kind of revolution where the visionaries are able to communicate their ideas, they're able to share those ideas with people all over the world and collaborate with like-minded individuals. And over time, these qualities can become more abundant in humans, where we all start to seek ways in which we can improve the current systems that we've established. 
The visionaries of the creator economy are not only transforming the way we share information, but also how we sell products, services, and ideas. Every individual has a potential brand, and that brand is a reflection of the creator's values, their beliefs, and aspirations. You can have many companies with many different brands, but you only get to create one story. So what story will you create? And you do need to create one because no matter what product you're building, what service you're offering, you need to find a way to sell it. And this isn't just with, with products and services. You know, when you're applying to a job, you're submitting cover letters, you're submitting your resume, all of these things that you've put together to, to submit to the job application, they're the brand that you're trying to display. If you're starting your own business, then you have to package it up so that you can offer it to the public and you have to sell it because it's not going to sell itself. You need to find a way to get that product out into the market. And once it's out in the market, you have to continually sell it and sell it. Building a personal brand makes it easy for you to sell your product services or your own time if that's what you're trying to sell if you're offering consulting services. When you've built up a personal brand and you've built up an audience that has trust in you and they see you as a voice of authority, then you have the audience that you can market your services to. Because a brand is like a song. You write a song and you need to sing it loudly for other people to hear it. And in the same way, a brand needs to be marketed, it needs to be distributed in order for people to see it and receive it. And social media is the meta for marketing. Meta is the most effective tactic available. It's a term borrowed from video gaming where it represents the most effective strategy for playing the game, for finding the, the perfect character to carry out a specific strategy. And the meta can evolve over time as the game develops, as there are game updates or new characters are introduced into the game. And in the same way, in real life, the market continues to change. The, the demands of your audience, the demands of, of what the public needs, the, the gaps that need to be filled, they continue to change. And so the meta will continue to change. And depending on what you plan to offer as a service or a product, the, the meta will change. It might be that right now Instagram is the best way for you to market your talents, or it could be TikTok or whatever it is, it's gonna continue to change. There might be new platforms that are produced that are more efficient for you to communicate your message or your brand. When I first started my software development business, I was looking for many ways to market it, and I found this group of professionals it's this um national group i won't say the name but basically you you go to these meetings that are local and they have local chapters all over the country and you get one minute to give a pitch on your business and what you're offering to a group of of people that are in your community uh, and they also have their own businesses or they're working for an employer that pays for them to be there and they also get one minute to pitch their ideas. But basically you meet with these same people week after week, it's always the same people. And you have to find creative ways to pitch the idea. And the point of these groups is that you give referrals to other members in the group and hopefully you get some in return. And these are very localized groups, you know, they have local chapters all over the nation, but really you're only working with uh, the people in your chapter. And so it's really good for mom and pop shops but you know, you're not gonna scale a huge business from going to these meetings. But what I found is that the most efficient use of my time wasn't gonna be pitching to the same people week after week. Instead, I could be using that time to create content for my LinkedIn community. Uh, and at the time, LinkedIn was the best avenue for me to market because I was focused on business to business. And I eventually moved on, but the whole point was to, to say that there's many ways that you can take your business, many ways that you can sell yourself or your brand, but there's always gonna be one meta. And the meta for most 
products and services is social media, is through a personal brand and growing a following. And you grow a following by creating value for those who consume your content. And with this following, you can market and distribute your products and services and eventually monetize the created value. Since the beginning of communities, humans have exchanged goods, services, and ideas. And we developed currency as a way to facilitate the exchange of these products. In this digital age, marketing and sales has become more crucial in order to be able to distribute your products to a larger audience. And the new currency is attention especially platforms that have short form content like Reels or TikTok. And so as a creator, you need to grasp the attention of your audience very quickly because otherwise they're just gonna continue scrolling to the next piece of content that grabs their attention. So how do you get started? Well, you need to take a holistic approach to what you can offer. If you've worked a traditional job, you've been a cog in a machine. But when you start a personal brand, you are the machine. What are you made of? What makes you, you? Don't just be a cog in a machine, break out and become the machine. As for ideas for content, your content can be purely entertainment or you can sell a service, you can sell a product and that can be a skill that you develop. So you can teach skills and sell them or you can sell your experience. If you've reached a level of accomplishment that's not common, uh, how did you get there? You can document your journey to something that you're working towards so that others who start on that same journey can learn from yours. As far as ideas, you could think about what it is that you're doing with your life. You know, are you a comedian who has been training in jujitsu for many years? Maybe you could be that funny jujitsu girl on TikTok or Instagram. Maybe short form would benefit you most. Are you someone who recently quit their job and is starting a new business you can document that journey so that people can see over time your failures and your successes and how you dealt with them and learn from your entrepreneurship journey if you have an esoteric interest that took you years to develop then you can look for ways to share with your audience why it means so much to you and how you became so passionate in it if it's something that most people don't study as in depth then you can share why why you did and convince your audience to also have the same passion for that field and maybe you could be the a pioneer in, in that field you could be the person that brought that topic into mainstream if you're a college student that's looking into starting your first job after college and you're researching different companies different corporations where they have different cultures then you can start by asking people at those companies for interviews so that you can get a glimpse of a day in the life of their at their job at that specific company so you can create videos like a day in the life of a graphic designer at google for example whatever journey you're on you can document your personal journey to mastering a specific skill no matter what that skill is there's gonna be a lot of other people who are also interested. And whatever idea you start out with, just hit record. And this is level one of your creator journey. Your ideas and your audience will evolve over time. Just get over the hurdle of overthinking it and get started. Work on your first three videos and publish them. Fuck it, just do it. Once you've worked on your first few videos and published them, then you can move on to level two of your creator journey, which is improving your skills. The aim is to work on the next seven videos to hone your skills. And if you're working on content for YouTube, these skills will be things like improving your titles, improving your thumbnails, writing, researching, scripting, storytelling, editing, and animation. It's important that you don't focus too much on the niche right now. You start producing something and you start to practice creating content. And by the time you finish publishing your 10th video, then you've reached level three of your creator journey. By this point, you've been doing this long enough that you start to become familiar with other creators in the, in the same space as you are and the things that they're doing and the things that your audience uh, are looking for. 
And level three is where you start to understand the game of the platform that you're on. So if it's on YouTube, then you start to understand how YouTube works, how to strategize your content for, for metrics, how to analyze those metrics, how to see what is performing well versus where people are clicking off or what kind of content of yours is performing the best. And then this is also where you can start to look into what niche you're going to go into uh, once you've been creating content in a specific area for long enough, you can maybe niche down even further. And we all have a niche. It's the things that we're interested in, the things that we already do. And it's easiest to create content on things that you're already doing. It can be things like yoga, meditation, martial arts, um, some kind of fitness, any kind of uh, study. It can be a skill that you develop, marketing, selling. In your niche, you want to be the voice of the people that you represent. So you want to join communities where you'll find individuals like that. You can join Discord groups, Facebook groups, and share ideas with other people. There are going to be people in your niche, or you can even take one approach and apply it to a different field, a different area. Just like you can take a business strategy and apply it to a different field and also see success. I'm going to give you a framework for marketing your content. The first part is understanding the goals of your audience. Who are the people that you're promoting to? Like I'm doing here with you. These videos are made for the visionary thinkers who are looking to quit their jobs and start a business or maybe they have already started a business. The self-starters. I've talked a little bit about different personality types in this video and in another video I talked about how different personality types thrive in different environments. But I'm speaking to the people that challenge structures, that people that are not satisfied with the status quo and can see new ways of doing things and making improvements to current systems and they want to create a new standard. The second part of the framework is understanding what the challenges and obstacles are of your audience. You need to understand the barriers that these people are facing so that you can teach them how to overcome them and maybe you even have to make them aware of the problem. I've identified the problem that a lot of people don't really know how to sell themselves. They don't recognize that they have to really put themselves out there in order to create ripples in the spaces that they're operating in to get the recognition that they desire. And then they can start slapping people with big waves with the actions that they're taking. Or maybe they do recognize that they, they need to put themselves out there, but they have a lot of limitations, a lot of uh, limiting beliefs or fears around that. And I do talk about that in another video called Getting Out of Your Own Way. And you can learn how to do exactly that, how to stop yourself from overthinking and just taking action. And the last part of the framework for effective marketing is presenting your solution. Once you understand the goals and challenges of your audience, then you can present a solution that you think will align with what they need. And if it doesn't, then you can take feedback and make changes to, to your approach, to your product, to your offering, uh, continually refine it so that you can give your audience the best value. For me, my solution are these videos. I hope that these videos inspire you to take action and more and more people can pursue things that are challenging and overcome their fears. Once you do get started, you'll need to think of ways in which you can measure your success. And success is likely not going to happen overnight. You have to be patient. If you talk to a lot of successful content creators, you'll find that a lot of them were creating content for months or years before their content was reaching people beyond their immediate circles. And your success can't be measured by vanity metrics like number of likes or subscribers or going viral. If you're on a platform like YouTube, like I am, there are many ways to measure your success. YouTube can lead to opportunities such as collaborating with other content creators or career opportunities or personal connections. 
or you could simply be creating a community and through the community that you build on your platform, other opportunities will arise. So some of your success will come indirectly through the content that you create. It'll be through the relationships that you've built uh, with your audience and opportunities that arise from those relationships. But if we're looking at more measurable and more direct channels of income, um, with YouTube, there's a lot. You, you can make your money through AdSense, you know, through more people consuming your content and watching ads. It can be through affiliate marketing. If you market products for other companies, it can be from speaking engagements and being invited on podcasts. Or you can be invited to do brand deals where a company will pay you for a video in order for you to create an ad for them. There are many ways to monetize your following. I'll cut this video here. I hope this video inspired you to start thinking about ways that you can create value for an audience and helps you recognize that you have some value that you can give and you can earn from. And if you have any hesitations or reservations for starting your own personal brand, then check out my video on getting out of your own way so that you can recognize what are some of the limiting beliefs that you have that you really shouldn't have and then you can start to take action rather than overthinking. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I hope to see you in my next video.